In this Pearson Workholding Q&A, I answer a question about our Pro Pallet system by giving some tips you might not know about. So question for this week, Jay, I'm planning on buying a PPS for a job that I'm almost sure I'm going to get, but for some crazy reason, if I don't, are there additional uses for the system I don't know about? That's an awesome question and I'm glad you asked. That was Steve. Uh, well, Steve, um, yes, there's a lot of things you can do. Let's take a look back in the shop and I'll show you some practical applications. So right here, what we've done here is we've taken our roto vise, and of course the roto vise um, mounts to a rotary unit, and we've placed the rotary unit, yes, on a pallet. And of course the pallet locks to the PPS base. Now this is on our VF4. The VF4 only has an extra inch outside of the cutting envelope. So we've got that PPS base right, right up to the edge of the table. So we're maximizing the amount of space that is left in the work envelope, trying to keep that rotary outside of it. Now we also have our smart plates. If you don't want to mount it to a pro pallet system, you could use our smart plate, which also extends um, the amount of usable space by shifting the rotor unit outside. But we're talking about the PPS. So this is one application, mounting it on. Uh, if, if you do mount it on a pallet, make sure that either the face of the rotary is just off the edge of the pallet so you don't rotate something and smack it. In this case, we have it well inside the width of the pallet so that our roto vise can clear the pallet and the PPS base. That's number one. For the next application, you can mount all of your vices on a pallet. Now it does build up the total height of the vise by about three inches. Um, you should probably face, well, you should definitely face the pallet first. That way you know that the pallet is flat and trammed in with the head. Uh, we recommend drilling and, and uh, tapping, a, a, typically it's half 13 threads. Um, so if you have a vise that uses toe clamps, I would recommend four of those. If you've got like an older Kurt with the two tabs, uh, two is just fine. But the beauty about this is you indicate that vise one time, lock it down. You don't ever need to indicate a vise again. Furthermore, if you can get some accurate measurements on where that vise, the back jaw of the vise is located, you can document that so that you can use the round pin as your X, Y, zero and the top of the Z pad on the PPS base as your Z zero. So it's already set up in your cam system. Now you don't have to do any type of offsets in Y, X, typically yes, because you're gonna use a work stop on one side of the, the vise, but you're not gonna have to indicate it. You're not gonna have to give the, the Y value. You can keep that saved in one of the uh, multiple work offsets in the control. And finally, one of the most creative things we've seen, we don't do this, but one of our customers dedicates a pallet to hold the tool presetter. Now the tool presetter is typically held on the table. You don't move it, but what they've done is they've mounted it to a corner and then they probe their tools with it. Now, why would anyone do this? Good question. This particular customer has a VF2, which has a cutting window of 16 in the Y and 30 in the X. So what they've done is they've standardized their table with three pro pallet bases, and then they use three of our 10 by 16 inch pallets. That way they have 100% coverage of the machine table. Now, when they do need to probe their tools, they just take off one of the pallets, put it on, and then there is their tool probe all set up. So there you go, three tips you may not have thought about in using the Pro Pallet system for things it just wasn't originally intended for, but works great. So if you like this content, I encourage you, maybe it's worth a subscription. If so, hit that notification bell so that your comment can get in sooner than anyone else's. So until next time, go innovate your production.